What is up, ladies and gentlemen, many here. Welcome back to the channel. How many attempts is too much to send a max grade limit project, whether that is bouldering or route climbing? Let's discuss. Question came up recently because I was talking a lot about sending routes quickly, on sighting, second going, flashing, and I also went through my personal grading, max grading history in this recent pyramid, grading pyramid video of mine. Uh, and kind of an attentive viewer posed the question um, Hey man, when you say you're trying to progress through the max grade, how many attempts would you say it takes for that grade? Because I always try to apply the 10 tries rule to my projects. If it takes more than 10 tries, I'm not strong enough yet, yet. But I also feel like I didn't reach my limit yet. Any insight? So for me, 10 tries is very little. When it comes to a really, really max grade project, I mean, obviously the tries become more, the, the total number of tries becomes more severe as we approach our, you know, lifetime max grade because this really takes a lot of effort, right? And 10 tries is not really a lot of effort. Just trying to pull up some examples here from my own um, max grade history. For my first 8C, that is the root sepsis as kind in the Atlitzgräben, it took me around a little bit over 70 goes. Um, to put that into perspective. So 10 tries compared to 70 goals, that's really little. Now, bear in mind that these 70 goals also include warm-up goals, checkout goals, all goals, right? I noted all goals in my wonderful training diary, which I had to pull up again, pull out again for the research for this video. But yeah, it was over 70 goals that I took for this route. Another example would be the route mode selector, which was, which was my first 8C+. Um, I was already strategically a little bit better, I think, and also I knew a lot more in terms of conditioning than uh, I knew back then when I climbed my first 8C. So for this new max grade, it took me only 65 goals, around 65. And these goals also include warming up goals, checkout goals, and also um, these goals include the goals that I took for a route called Kiriku, which shares the same start of this route. So I did this route first, of course, it's an 8B+, really bouldery. And the Kiriku route took me around 15 attempts, 15 goals, actually, not 15 attempts. But uh, even including those goals, it took me 65 goals to climb Mona Selector. So... To put the 10 tries rule here into perspective, now could I have climbed these new max grades of mine faster, even faster, although they were pretty, took me quite a long time, uh, probably, I could have been strategically a lot better, I think especially on the first, uh, of my, on my first 8C when I took, when it took me 70, 70 goals, over 70 goals, the thing is, um, it also depends on the route, and the question is also how can we how can we assess a route and how we feel on a route to find out if we are already actually ready to project that route, right? That's an interesting question. And that depends on the character of the route and how you feel on the route. Some examples again. Okay, so you've got this super bouldery route. Um, it's just a, it's just a, basically one low percentage move, let's say, which comes after 10 seconds of climbing from the ground. So you climb 10 seconds, make two, three clips, then you've got this one super low percentage move and then you got an easy top out, right? And you can do the one percent, the low percentage move as a single move. Should you try to project the route? Of course, because this is really the um, the limiting factor is just the one move, right? And often still, if you're unlucky, it's still gonna take you 20 goes, 30 goes to climb, to actually climb the route because it's a low percentage move and you have to you have to kind of do the shotgun approach here, a so-called shotgun approach. You just try the route, you spend attempts, attempts, attempts and just wait for that one attempt where you're lucky enough to hit that uh, crux hold just perfectly, right? Let's say we have the same route, but the boulder is not after 10 seconds of climbing, but after 50, 60 seconds of climbing, some power endurance stuff, you really have to perfect the sequence so that you get to the boulder as fresh as possible. You still can do the single move, but you can do this, the crux move barely as a single move. Well, then you can already anticipate that it's probably going to take you quite a while to climb the route because until you get the power endurance section wired enough to be fresh enough to properly try the single move, it's going to take some time. And this was actually the case for my first 8C. 
it was a bouldery with a couple of sketch it was a boulder bouldery route actually with a couple of sketchy moves in the crux and before that there was a significant power endurance se section with lots of clips and it's really exhausting some pumpy stuff as well there so i had to get that one wired until i actually could for the first time really try the boulder from the ground right so this is how the the 70 goals come into place you spend some time perfecting some sequences and let's say you can't even do the single move in such a route the single crux move the sketchy move whatever you want to call it well, then you should probably move on to something else. So let's take a look at pure aerobic endurance routes, the kind of routes where you shake your way to the top or where you almost can shake your way to the top. I climbed a couple of these routes now in Greece again because they have really lots of good routes in that style with knee pads and you can get knee bars and no hand rest if you know how to do it and stuff. So with pure endurance routes, it's really almost the case that you get almost a little bit better with every single attempt. Right? Usually you have long sequences like 10, 20, even 30 moves back to back uh, with not a significant rest, but you can always shake out a little. And it's just so with the character of these routes that you always get a little bit better and better and better if you continue to project them. So it might be the case that you cannot even do five move sequences at the beginning when you check them out, but you can do all the single moves instantly almost, right? If you can't do all the single moves, well, then you can try to do all the single moves in the second or third go. And if you can do them then, then you still have quite good chances because they are pure endurance. And with time, you're going to get so efficient on the sequence that you're going to save so much energy that at some point you're just going to climb through them, right? So this is the thing with pure endurance routes. You can, even though it's, they seem quite far away on your first go, they become quite reachable really, really quickly. Because also endurance is something that you gain quite a lot with training, right? Quite quickly, contrarily to max power, where we have to train a lot on the hangboard, maybe do some outdoor bouldering first until we, we get that finger strength. So with bouldery routes, it's a different story again. As I said, it depends on the character of the route and how that route feels, uh, feels on your first, second, third, and fourth and fifth go probably. You should, do, you should be able to do all the moves probably on the fifth go, right? Unless it's a super bouldery route and the, the crux move is right at the beginning and you just have to get that specific strange strength for your crux move. I mean, this is then essentially bouldering, right? In bouldering, we also have this situation quite a lot that we just cannot do one or two single moves. But the moves are so approachable and so project projectable that we can figure them out just with time because as we get the, the specific muscle memory and we can also try them instantly right from the boulder pad we don't have to climb up there all the time sometimes if that's the case the boulder when the boulder is higher up again as i said and you can't do the single move and you have power endurance until that crux well then it's probably time to look for something else to become stronger first until you can do the single move at least relatively easily so that you have some uh, you know some tolerance there so it depends on the character of the route. All that being said, I would say there is something like a general rule of thumb that I can give you here. And this general rule for me uh, is as following 50 attempts. Okay, 50 goes rather, not 50 attempts or yeah, probably 50 attempts. Let's go with 50 attempts. That's around maybe if you include checkout goals and warm up goals, that's around 70 goals, maybe or something like that, something along those lines. If you go beyond that, you can be almost certain that you could have climbed the route faster if you applied, if you had applied a more efficient strategy. If you had gone to the gym and trained the right things more or if you had gone outdoor bouldering first and got some more finger strength first to then apply this new finger strength on the project, you could have probably sent it faster. But if you, but if you are still below 50 real good attempts, well, you might just learn a bit of everything new. You know, you might just still learn a bit better muscle memory for the route. Or you might just realize that there is a tiny slight little drop knee in the crux that you can utilize to make the crux move a little bit easier and a little bit less low percentage. All these kind of details, I think below 50 real good attempts, 
there's still tiny stuff that you learn on a route. It all, obviously, this is hugely dependent also on the technical skills of the climber. A climber that has good technique will learn a route a lot faster than a climber that has, that has bad technique and less experience, right? Experience matters here a lot as well. And this is also what makes a good onsighter. A good onsighter has so much experience with one grade that he, on the way to the top, realizes which solutions are too hard for the grade and which are probably the real solutions, you know, because they fit to the grade kind of. And this is how you apply these kind of knowledges also to your projects, obviously. If, you've, if you're finding yourself in a solution that is much too hard, well, then you know with your experience you're still in the wrong solution. And then you're looking for something else and then you're finding it. If you don't have the experience, you never look for something else and the project seems very hard for you all the time. But if you spend a lot of attempts, then you kind of fall into the right solution with time anyway. And this is something that still can happen beyond 50 attempts. Uh, that below 50 attempts. It can, of course, also happen beyond 50 attempts, but then you're just a technically very bad climber for that grade let's say and you should spend some more time broadening your pyramid below that project so these are my uh, uh my opinions on the matter how many attempts is too much i would go with the very rough 50 attempt rule that's around 70 goes including warming up and checking out and stuff and uh, obviously it depends a lot on the character of the route and also on the skill of the climber, especially the technical skill of the climber and its experience. Let me know down below, what do you think? How is your experience with that kind of subject? Always interesting to read. Drop a like if you're down there already and I'll see you soon in the next one, guys. Bye.